These are illegal immigrants that have just been smuggled over the United States border by the Mexican cartel. Behind every migrant crossing, someone is making thousands of dollars. I have spoken with hundreds of migrants and each of them have paid between five to $10,000 to cross the US border. For example, watch how much money the cartel makes in this 10 second clip. And here in the state of Arizona, businesses and organizations are making millions of dollars profiting off this mass migration here in the United States. Come with me as I catch migrants crossing over the border and as I sneak into these facilities that are making millions of dollars off of mass migration here in the United States. We are here in Tucson, Arizona. Right behind me is a shelter that is being used to house illegal immigrants right here. We have my good friend. Cesar. We're gonna be sending Cesar in. He's got a bunch of cameras on him. He's gonna be showing us what it's really like inside of the shelter. Bien suerte, mi amigo. <laughs> Vamos. This is one of the many hotels that has been transformed into a shelter to house all these migrants here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Hey, where, where are from? Mexico? Uh, Senegal. 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 Oh, Senegal. Senegal. I, I like smoke. No smoke. Ah, smoke? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> amigo, ¿cómo está? Mexico. You? Africa. Africa? What part? Donde eres amigo? Donde eres? Donde Senegal? Senegal. My friend Caesar managed to sneak into where they are all sleeping and the bathrooms were absolutely trashed. Later that night, I went back to see if I could get in, but as I got closer to the hotel, a new arrival of migrants had just been dropped off at the hotel. Come there you go. Buenas noches, buenas noches. Um, ¿dónde son ustedes? Los noches. As the migrants were getting their rooms for the night, a worker came and verbally attacked me. Are you even supposed to be here? What do you mean? Are I can't like come look? No, like, this is private property right now. It's for immigrants. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave. Well, then get the f out of here, the okay. f We're gonna call the cops. No, okay. No, 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 Yeah, have a good one. Okay, what do you mean? What? And she did call the cops on me, and another bus of migrants arrived. Is that a bus filled with so, illegal immigrants behind you? I'm not sure. Um, you know it's no. a bus. Don't lie to me. All right, guys. You know do you guys have a, any other questions about yes. do you, why did you trespassing just lie to me? and going on the property? Is that a bus filled with illegal immigrants? Sir, I'm not on the bus. Look, look behind you. All right, guys. All right, a bunch of people are just leaving this bus right now, and I look like a bunch of little kids, and they're all heading out. I don't know where they're going. How many of these kids go missing after they get transported About through? One in three of the migrant children were not able to account for them um, under the Biden administration. And we just saw a whole bus full pulling out of mostly unaccompanied migrant children. I think they had maybe three adults in there for 30 kids. And while this whole bus is full of these minor migrant children, the police are talking to us because we're asking questions. So the police are more concerned about us than that one in three of those children will be unaccounted for and missing. Uh, that to me is, that is the state of, of our country right now. And that is abysmal. So who's looking out for them? It's a sad deal that's going I'm on here. I'm glad they're here to ask journalists to leave the property. Good work. Good work, taxpayer dollars at work. To find out how these migrants are arriving to these shelters, we met up with a member of the army who has been investigating camps and organizations that are near the border in Arizona. There's two primary um, NGO camps that are put on by No More Deaths, Unitarian Unified Church of Tucson and Los Samaritanos. They're pretty hostile and they have two significant camps set up. One is directly on the border, um, but the first one we're gonna go to is outside of the town of Aravaca where they have significant infrastructure set up, um, a ton of uh, smugglers, camo, and cartel backpacks. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty wild to see. So needless to say, where we're going is pretty dangerous. Um, it's probably the most dangerous section of the border. We went into the desert of Arizona to a small city of Aravaca. On top of the millions of adults that cross the border, many young children are also smuggled across the border. Watch this video where cartel members drop children off over the border wall. My friend Caesar actually used to work for an organization that helped migrants but quit after receiving a shocking message from his boss. And we're about to go into this NGO and we're going to be talking to people. So give us a little insight on what these NGOs do. They move people, they house them, they feed them, and they guide them to North America. And wh why did you decide to leave? You don't know so very sure because I got an email from my former employer that we gave children well, to the I mean, wrong people. I can always come up with a lot of child like, trafficking no, goes on here. That's a confirmed 100,000 children, migrant children lost in the U.S. 
This number was reported in 2021. So we don't know how many have been lost from 2021 until now because they won't release those numbers. Me and journalist James O'Keefe dressed up as construction men and acted as if we were surveying the land so we could sneak into the property. We entered into no mas muertes, no more deaths. It had an extremely eerie feeling as soon as we walked into this facility. It was filled with scrap metal. Everything was almost destroyed and there was very few workers. And the workers that we did meet, as you'll see right here, they all had their mask on. I don't know what they're covering or what oh, they're good. doing here yeah, in this, this building. However, it is extremely we'll suspicious. Some surveying in the area. You gotta go. This is private property. Oh, okay. Private property. Um, oh, okay. We're just doing right. some surveying. Um, you got it now. Sorry. Is there someone we can speak to? I'm sorry. There's not. You have to call in before you walk into private property. Okay. And you guys like a a, a nonprofit or uh, what? What exactly is this? Uh, I need to be able to talk to the people who would be able to okay. talk to you. Are you recording with that, Kevin? No, that's for surveying. No. No. How's it going, ma'am? Did you hear this is private property? Yeah, we, yeah, we just finished up talking to them. On the dirt road. All I'm going to tell you is that you should leave the property. No. Oh. Okay, no problem. No problem. And just and just so that we're aware, what is the nature of this? This is a um, is this a corporation or? I'm not answering any questions. You came into the property without any like okay. permission. So that's kind of what I'm responding to. Okay. And I've asked you, I think three times now. Uh, tell me a little bit more about what goes on inside of that little camp right there that we were just in. I was here about a week ago. Um, it was at night and there was no one here, not a soul. And so what is their like overall mission? Are they like funding the migrants to come over? Or are they helping the migrants? They're helping, they're helping the migrants come over and they're helping the cartels. In this area of Aravaca, it's primarily human smuggling, so women and children for sex smuggling or uh, military age males coming across the border from North Africa, Middle East, and China are coming through right here. So when the cartels are bringing people over, they're obviously making a lot of money. How much money do you think they're making a day off of this illegal immigration? Uh, it's estimated they're making at least $200 million a day between uh, fentanyl, methamphetamine, and human smuggling. And human smuggling is obviously the cash cow there because it's a renewable resource. They don't have to plant it or farm it or anything like that. And when people get jammed up at the border, they just go back again for however much it costs. And so people are spending thousands, like tens of thousands of dollars to go from Central America, bottom of Mexico, all the way up to the border and then paying the fee to cross. So to suspect that an organization like this is getting paid by one of those organizations is, it, it is not unfathomable. It is, uh, it's pretty likely. We then moved to the city of Zazabi where the same non-government organizations or NGOs had set up camp for the migrants after they crossed the U.S. border. We're right here on the borderline and right here is just another shelter on the line of the border. There's nobody working here at the NGO but however I have met this lady and her hat says outlaws against pedal. Yes. So what do you do down here at the border? I, my name is Butterfly, I've been coming down here three years, and my job as humanitarian and pastor down here is to stop child trafficking. Mm -hmm. All trafficking, but number one child trafficking down here. Yeah, because it looks like down here, what do we have, what do we have going on down here in this shelter? It looks like there's food for everybody. So are you guys bringing in this food? No. Um, this is the Samaritans and No More Deaths. This is a controlled camp. This is no different than the other side of the wall. They work with the cartels to keep the human traffic line going. The NGOs do? Yeah. So there are human trafficking people here in the United States working with the cartel? Absolutely. It is government-funded, cartel-run, child trafficking, human trafficking. Yes, it is. I've been here three years, like I said. And so what happens to these little kids after they come across the border? Um... They get kicked through by the cartel. We've had them come up in cages and uh, dropped off. Cartel Coyote Guide will bring them to the wall. In, li in literal animal cages? Yeah, well, we confiscated a phone, and uh, on the phone it showed the cages. We've also confiscated phones with children being posed for child trafficking. Yeah. What, is that? what does that mean? Like they're, like, they're, listen, like on almost on like an well, sort of, like eBay type of thing? Do um, they have their photo and their price yeah. number? Yes. Yes, I actually was at hole three and had a uh, cartel guy bring uh, three children down and was tra and was posing three of the girls on at hole three for trafficking. I had a conversation with him. It was horrifying. Yeah, I, I still, I, I've seen things down here that I can't unsee. 
I believe it. And how much do you think like these organizations like no more deaths.org and Catholic community services are making off of this illegal immigration? I think they're making a ton. I, I literally wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt because they were threatening the children to stay away from me. I've had Operation Underground Railroad, a couple guys show up and say, if you are not down here doing what you did, these kids are ghosts, they disappear. But these people are scared. They've been threatened. And Migrants. So, yes, uh, the parents even, the children. But God is amazing. And I have had several situations I've been able to follow through and help a child. We've been able to pull kids off traffic lines. So mo most people think that People that, people that come over are adults or their families, but there also are just little kids that come all over by themselves, correct? I had one time where 38 children between the ages of 4 and 14 came through at 10 in the night by themselves without. These are all unaccompanied minors, all on the traffic line. I'm a religious person myself, and do you think when these, church, when these churches use the name of like God or Jesus, uh, do you think they're using his name in vain? Absolutely. Are they using it for their benefit? Absolutely. What do you think God has to say to those those people? I think uh, they'll get to hear that when they show up. Uh, according to my Bible, uh, he never. when they say, well, we fed the poor and we did this and we did that, he'll say, I never knew you. Uh, God is a relationship. He's not a religion. He created us. He gave us a purpose. He gave us a plan. Trafficking children, trafficking, any kind of human trafficking is not in his plan. I don't like this going on. I don't want this to happen. It's going to kill our culture. It's destroying our land. But if you're going to come and you have hope in Christ, then maybe you'll find a different way to make it work. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... I like that. I'm just going to walk you guys through what's here at this camp. Like, they got just shelters built into here. They got blankets in there. And the craziest thing is they have... Everything is funded by American Red Cross and Catholic Services. And here's the space blankets that they use to sleep at night here. And blankets food in here for everybody and they even got coffee for them this is the crazy part when people think oh everyone comes over they don't have anything right right here is just full of clothes shoes everything you could possibly think of little socks for little girls construction vests jackets water literally everything they could possibly want is here rise across the border here i'll take you guys into some more of these shelters in here huge tent right here nice blankets pads for them and i don't know what this is this is looks like this is where they go bathroom right here there's a bunch of poop in there in hopes of finding migrants crossing the border i headed to lukeville arizona where i had once interviewed hundreds of migrants and to our surprise there was actually nobody crossing through the border wall we have been here for literally like five hours absolutely no one's came across the border instead all of the migrants were lined up on the mexican side and they were waiting Waiting their turn to enter into the United States with an appointment they made with the CBP One app. It's an app that the government has made to let these migrants come into the United States legally. Hoy día llegó aquí y ahora dónde les van a llevar? Vamos to Washington. Tiene que pagar para tomar el autobús. No. No. Es el rancho no lo paga todo hasta allá. El rancho. ¿Quién es el rancho? Wake Up se llama. ¿Cómo? Wake Up Farms. Todos los que están viniendo aquí son mexicanos. Todos. Entraron por la aplicación, me imagino. Sí. ¿Cuánto tiempo demoraba eso? Pues nada, no, no, casi. Very interesting what those guys just said. So they're being contracted by a farm in Washington State that is going to pay for them to go from Mexico to the farm to go work for the farm in Washington. From Lukeville, we went to Nogales to find people crossing through the border. This is the border here in Nogales, Arizona. It's a lot different than any other border I have seen. They have the huge wall and then they have the razor wire. As you can see, you guys, this is that razor wire. This is what they put all over in Texas. Well, I'm here to say that Arizona, this part in Nogales, Arizona, is loaded with razor wire. This is a different type of razor wire. They even have spikes coming out to connect the razor wire. That way no one can cross over the wall. But if you go a few miles west, the border wall is completely open. I mean, literally completely open. It's wide open. I don't understand why right here it is so open because if you come all the way over here, then the border wall starts again, but there's just huge gaps for anyone to come in. On top of that, they have double line fencing, but the double line fencing just cuts off right here. I went back to the car to grab something and I looked back and people were literally coming through the border wall. Holy crap, people are coming over right now. There's a whole troop of them right here. I hurry and ran to tell border patrol, but border patrol seemed to not people even People are care. coming! 
People are crossing right now. And he doesn't even care. And with Border Patrol not stopping people from coming into the country, I had no other option. There's a coyote, there's a coyote, there's a, there's a coyote. He's got sunglasses on. But to welcome these people that way, He's the cartel member on. would not come after me. La policía ya se fue, están bien. Bienvenido, no hay nadie aquí, están bien, están bien. ¿Cómo están? Bien. Acaban de llegar. ¿De dónde son ustedes? Son de Guatemala. ¿De Guatemala? Sí. ¿Tiene un bebé? Sí. ¿Sí? ¿Y caminar? ¿De dónde son? De Guatemala. ¿Y llegó aquí con un bebé en su estómago? Sí. ¿Y cómo fue el trayecto? Fue bien. ¿Bien? ¿Y ahora cómo se siente estar aquí en los Estados Unidos? Bien. Bien. ¿Fue muy difícil caminar, hacer todo el trayecto sí. con el bebé? Sí, está cuenta? bien. Ajá. ¿El bebé está bien? Sí. ¿Y ustedes están bien? Sí, estamos bien. Sí. Ajá. Bueno, bienvenidos. Y... Bien. And even more people kept coming in. ¿Cómo fue? Cansado. ¿Cómo se siente ahora estar aquí en los Estados Unidos? Eh, pues sentimos bonito, pues es lo que queremos pues vivir esta experiencia. ¿Y ahora a dónde van? Eh, pues ahorita a ver qué más, más adelante dice. Wow. Sí, sale. Me voy, gracias. Chao. ¿Por qué tomaron la decisión para venir aquí a los Estados Unidos? Pues para una mejor forma de vida. Es más que nada porque ahí en nuestro estado pues ya no, no hay pues manera de poder sobrevivir. Uh -huh. ah. ¿Y la situación en México está muy mal? Sí, un poco, sí, la verdad, sí. Crítico. Es. ¿Qué, ¿Qué está pasando en México? Pues ahorita lo que pasa, ahorita como están los partidos políticos, hay mucha represión contra los que nos estamos este, oponiendo a otros, part a otros partidos. Uh -huh. Por lo cual, este, pues andamos huyendo de... De eso, de que pues, a veces nos amenazan de... ¿Y ahora, ahora dónde van? Pues, pues no, no sé, vamos a tratar de que pues, te, nos den la oportunidad de, de llegar a este país y nos, nos den un lugarcito para uh -huh. poder trabajar. Yo no me quiero entregar a migración. ¿No quiere entregarse a migración? ¿A dónde quiere ir? Señora, ¿dónde quiere ir si no quiere ir a inmigración? Yo, yo, yo me quiero cruzar, pero no quiero cruzar migración porque yo no quiero que me deporten otra vez. Yeah, bueno, ahí es donde tiene que ir. So that was actually crazy. People were literally getting moved over. Uh, me and the cartel guy waved at each other. We said hi. I just want to say though, as as you witness this happening, it's completely not right what is going on. The border patrol is watching this. I They're, literally yelled at the border patrol. I said people are coming in, and he waved me off. They they were on both sides watching this happen. But as a woman and as a mom, this really touches your heart because these people have little babies and that lady was pregnant. They're, they have desperation in their face. Their faces look desperate. It's, it's so awful what is happening. So the police are more concerned about us than that one in three of those children will be unaccounted for and missing. How much money do you think they're making a day off of this illegal immigration? Uh, it's estimated they're making at least $200 million a day. I had one time where 38 children between the ages of 4 and 14 came through at 10 in the night by themselves without. These are all unaccompanied minors, all on the traffic line. One wall right here, and then they have a double wall, it's a double layered wall, but for some reason there's just big huge wide open gaps in the middle of the border wall, and the border patrol literally waved me off when I told them that people were coming in. <laughs> like, what? I'm here at Catholic Community Services. This is the blanket I found at the border, and now we're here. I'm gonna ask them what involvement they have with what's going on at the border, how they're helping people, and what they do with people after they come across the border. We went there, and then they gave us this address. So, um, one, we cannot have any filming on this property. It is private property. Okay. So I'm gonna have to ask you to leave for that. They kicked my mom off the property, but my microphone was still recording, and what I heard was shocking. Cuando llegue al aeropuerto, va a buscar esa aerolínea, American Airlines, va a ir al escritorio de American Airlines y enseñarles ese documento. Here, I believe they're paying for the flights for these migrants to get taken to the airport and then they disperse them throughout the United States. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, I will be reading your comments down below. This is Nick and I will see you next video.